Okay, good morning, uh, members of the press. Uh, I'm here with me, uh, a team from the county government of Mombasa. My name is uh, Godfrey Nyongesa Nato. I'm the acting CEC for health services. And with me, I have the CEC for finance and uh, economic planning. I have uh, the chair of the county public service board with me. I have uh, the acting county secretary with me. I have the CEO of the county public service board with me. And I also have uh, the county chief officer in charge of uh, health services and uh, Dr. Ochola uh, on the team. We have called you uh, this morning because we have a statement to give with regards to the ongoing uh, strike by doctors and uh, other medical officers within the county and as you understand across the country. I want to start by saying that uh, His Excellency the Governor, uh, Hassan Ali Joho, understands pretty well the pain that a common Mwananchi in Mombasa, the common citizen of Mombasa, goes through in seeking for medical services in the absence of a functional public health system. And because of that understanding, he has met in his two terms a top priority towards health services, including planning, budgeting, and even staff recruitment. You must be aware that in Mombasa, the Coast General Hospital is probably the most equipped medical facility in the country, outside the Kenya National Hospital and the Kenya University Hospital. If you go there, you will find the state-of-art facilities that are geared towards making sure that the citizen of Mombasa gets top-notch medical services. That has been our priority. His Excellency the Governor also understands the value of his medical staff. And if you look at our recruitment plan, you will realize that a lot of investment has been made into recruiting top-notch and highly qualified staff in our hospitals. And also, we have done quite a lot of investment in developing their capacity through training, even when they are formally employed with us. And so any allegation out there that he says he excellence the governor is not responsive to the needs of the people, is not responsive to the needs of the medical officers that we have, those allegations do not sit on the foundations of truth. And that's why even when we engage with the doctors who are the medical officers who are our staff, we need to put the truth as it is on the table so that we don't confuse our people. I wish to respond to the issues that have made the doctors to be on strike. And as you must be aware that there was a return to formula a framework that was signed in which return to work of the doctors and other medical facility was given the topmost priority by the Ministry of Health and also by the county government of Mombasa. There were demands that were raised by the doctors and other uh, medical officers within the county. And in the discussions that we have had, one of them very recent, we did narrow to three conditions that the doctors wanted us to address. And those three conditions were the issue of promotion of the doctors and other staff in the health services, the issue of statutory deductions, and finally, the issue of the medical cover. I wish to report to the people of Mombasa that up to now, a total of 135 medical officers have been promoted in line with 
an agreed formula, which we have agreed on how we will promote them going forward. And this agreed formula will guide us in not only the current promotional initiatives, but in future promotion, so that we don't have these issues recurring every now and then. On the issue of uh, statutory deductions, we have also had very, very fruitful discussions with the doctors, and I'm very sure they understand the current constraints that we have in terms of money coming into the county. And in our discussion, we thought that we have explained our situation well and informed them that the issue of payment of statutory deductions is a priority to us. And we commit ourselves to settle all of them in the nearest uh, possible uh, time frame. Number three, the issue of the medical cover. I wish to inform the people of Mombasa and the public in general that all the staff of the county government of Mombasa, including the medical staff, are covered by a comprehensive super cover of the NHIF. And they have continued to enjoy the benefits that are within this framework with NHIF. The issue in our last uh, discussion that was raised by the medical uh, 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 staff was that we include the staff who are on short contracts into the NHIF scheme. As we are aware, this was not the case before. And so in our discussions, we have taken that very, very seriously, and we have engaged with NHIF with a view of including this short-term staff into our comprehensive super cover of the NHIF. So as we speak, we are in the process of concluding this process of making sure that these staff are also enjoying the cover that others are enjoying within the NHIF framework. As I conclude uh, this statement, I wish to remind the people of Mombasa that the health facilities that we have in Mombasa constitute 80% being private facilities and 20% being public. We have tried our level best to make sure that our public facilities are well equipped. If you go to all our sub-counties, you will find our level two, level three medical facilities are well equipped to handle issues at that level. And so when, we're looking, when we are looking at the issues around health services to the people, we need also to understand that the private sector controls quite a junk of the medical facilities that we have. And so my plea to the doctors and other medical staff is that while we are in this negotiation, that they need to think about that common manangi, that mamamboga in Congoea, that person who crosses the very every day, and when they are sick, they look for services in our public facilities because they can't afford services in the private sector. So as we engage to make sure that our work environment is good for us, it's important also to make that consideration and not subject the common manangi to the suffering that they don't deserve. If you are pursuing personal interest, it's important because all of us are in this thing together. We have a collective responsibility to make sure that the society is safe, to make sure that the society does not suffer from our want of making our work environment a good. So that is my plea, and uh, the return to work formula was very, very clear, that even as we engage in the negotiation, which we are very open, and His Excellency the Governor has given us the mandate to negotiate for the benefit of the medical staff and also for the people. We pray and we ask the medical uh, staff to consider that common manangi and return to work even as we continue negotiating. And we are very sure that we open ourselves, we are open in our minds, we are not hiding any uh, cards under the table, and we will do this for the sake of the people of Mombasa and also for the sake of our medical practitioners, which we value very highly. 
And so I want to ask um, my colleague, the CEC for finance, just to mention a little bit on the constraints that we are going through that have made us probably to go a bit slowly on some of the commitments that we have made. Maria, please. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Waziri Nato, and it's really a pleasure to have you all here today. Uh, as uh, Waziri has mentioned, there was a return to work formula that was signed on the 20th of October 2019 uh, between the Kenya Medical Practitioners, that KMPDU, and uh, the county government of Mombasa. The issues that were raised in that uh, return to work formula were almost 20 issues. But with this current strike, we've managed to narrow down those key issues to three main priorities, which uh, Waziri has already highlighted. And perhaps just to give you a slight background or as to reasons as to why these issues, which largely border around finances, have actually brought us to, to this kind of situation that we're experiencing today. One is, uh, as you're all aware, because it has been out there in uh, the public domain. Uh, the third generation formula, which actually dictates how much each county uh, is going to get, does not favor the county government of Mombasa. Again, Mombasa County is a city county. The services that we provide to our wananchi cannot be compared to uh, rural counties. And that is why a number of counties, most city counties, are actually suffering uh, similar situations that we are experiencing in Mombasa. And as to, as to that, there is a reason as to why uh, these five city counties, that is Mombasa, Nairobi, Wasingishu, Kisumu, and Nakuru, came together in 2018 uh, to form the city-county dialogue, where we, 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 we share the issues and the challenges that we're experiencing as counties, and we are coming together to see how best we can be able to lobby uh, to national government and other bodies so that the counties can either get additional money through the formula or we can get a special grant so that we can be able to provide these uh, specific services that we are giving to, uh, to citizens and residents that are in city counties. But that really has not been fruitful, though I believe the discussions uh, are still ongoing. Again, as you are fully aware right now, uh, as the media, uh, Mombasa County uh, currently is receiving seven billion in shareable revenue. Our wage bill is over five billion and growing uh, as it is, because uh, the health sector is uh, actually carries the biggest share in our budget. It is our topmost priority. And the kind of services that we are working towards providing in the health sector, already we are having a cath lab, uh, we have the radiology department, which are all going to require human resource. That means our wage bill will be further growing. And uh, if five billion goes towards our wage bill, two billion is what is remaining for the county to divide between operations and maintenance, and at the same time a uh, development expenditure for the county. Uh, as again, as you're all aware, uh, the county has really struggled from 2018 due to the operationalization of the SGR because predominantly Mombasa County, there are only two sectors that have been uh, the main drivers of economy in the county and that has been logistics and tourism. And both sectors have been severely hit from 2018. And that is why it has led to the county not collecting enough in its uh, own source revenue and uh, it has really taken an, an effect uh, in making sure that we provide our services to the residents of Mombasa. That is just one of the factors. The other uh, factor, of course, is COVID-19, which came uh, earlier in 20, uh, 2020, uh, that is uh, last year. It again adversely affected uh, the businesses in Mombasa and generally the economy in Mombasa and all over the country and globally, where the whole world has actually been, uh, been affected. And um, uh, we do expect, we were actually expecting that uh, the national government will actually take cognizance of this and make sure that uh, uh, the revised formula or ensure that at least counties like Mombasa receive additional money because again we were in the front in terms of counties that 
that were highly affected by COVID. Mombasa was, was actually a hotspot uh, after Nairobi County. So these are just some uh, of the few factors, again, with the, with the wage bill. Of course, Mombasa County being a city county, a former municipality, we inherited a lot of stuff from the former municipalities, which again has uh, aggravated uh, the growth of our wage bill. So these are just some of the constraints that we've been experiencing that has led to the delay in uh, payment of statutory deductions, and also we've been experiencing some delays uh, in our salaries. Though we, as a county, we have made strides and we've ensured that we've taken other measures to see how we can be able to cushion our, our staff in terms of getting uh, their salaries on a monthly basis rather than uh, waiting for monies from uh, National Treasury. If you allow me uh, just to borrow what uh, the governor of Kisumu County, Anyang Nyongo, His Excellency Anyang Nyongo said yesterday, you know, there are no uh, simple solution towards complex matters. And this indeed is a complex matter. And Mombasa County, again, being a, a responsive county, we've ensured that we've had several discussions with the doctors. And what we want to ensure is that we have a robust uh, a robust understanding uh, uh, between the doctors and uh, the county government of Mombasa so that we don't have an occurrence of such nature in the future. So uh, other than that, I think uh, we are now ready to take uh, any questions uh, from your side. We Thank you. Uh, just to comment on the issue of reinstatement. Uh, the dismissal didn't just start, or we just didn't wake up to see a dismissal or somebody being dismissed. This process started some couple of months ago, uh, sometimes in November. We signed a return to work formula on the 2nd of October. And uh, one of the issues, or one of what has been driven to, is actually the issue of promotions, the statutory deduction, and the NHIF super cover. However, we have been engaged the doctors in a lot of uh, instances, especially on the same, because in the process of implementing the return to work formula, we experience some challenges because of the job groups and all. It's not that the promotions have not been made, the promotions have started. But this is an ongoing process. The issue of reinstatement is not because before the dismissal, they were given show cause letters, and after the show cause letters, they were called for hearing, but the doctors never showed up. After that, that's when now we took the decision to do that. So even the issue of reinstatement, I don't think the county has, an, has a challenge with that. The fact that we are committed to the doctors, we are committed as well to the citizenry of Mombasa, because the person who is actually suffering is, is the local Monanchi. So basically, this, the restatement, it, it has also a process which uh, we have to go within the law, and then eventually we are still negotiating with the doctors, and then after that, we will advise. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll respond to the question on uh, statutory uh, deductions. Uh, what I want to make clear, statutory deductions are not only for doctors. Remember, statutory deductions are for the entire staff of the county government of Mombasa. They're not only for, for the doctors. That is what we are behind with. And the discussions and dialogue we've been having with doctors and other unions, we've already explained to them and we've given our commitment that statutory deductions in the welfare of the staff of the county is topmost priority for management. And we are striving to ensure that we clear the statutory deductions within the shortest time possible. What again I would like to put forth and make it clear is that everybody standing here today, including the doctors and even His Excellency the Governor, we are all working for the common Mwananchi. We are all working for the residents of Mombasa County. The tariffs, uh, the fees and charges at uh, public hospitals are subsidized and the common Mwananchi is the one suffering today because they cannot uh, get those services from public hospitals and they cannot access the service from private hospitals. It's something that we all need to ponder about. Thank you. Thank you.